Welcome back guys. As you can see, I was at SEMA in Las Vegas, which is one of the world's biggest automotive trade shows. And while I was at SEMA, I came across Skinny Guy Campers. And if you've never heard of these guys, these guys make one of the coolest truck toppers I've ever seen. Truck toppers usually just have a shell and a bed underneath there. But these guys have everything, including a toilet with a black tank fresh water, sink, stove, everything you can imagine, even a shower inside the truck topper. And when you close it up, it fits inside your garage. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at what Skinny Guy Campers has at SEMA. Skinny Guy Campers, Donovan, tell us what you got, man, what's new? Yeah, so uh, I'm Donovan Fredrickson, Skinny Guy Campers, um, one of the co-creators of the product here. So it's an ever-evolving uh, process to get dialed in on the manufacturing side, which is what we've been working the hardest at. Uh, so been uh, quite a, a few little changes. Uh, aesthetically, you really can't see them until I point them out. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, our tent, right? Our tent is um, our tent is by a different maker, and it has uh, far larger panels on it than our last oh, tent. Oh, nice! Uh, so uh, both sides are are really quite open. You can really zip everything open and have almost like a screen room in there. So the front window is much larger. That side window covers Let's the, look the over entire here. panel. Made some updates. We added a screen door to the, the entry area here. Uh, so before we didn't have that, we just had the zip and open uh, door uh, system that we that we started with, but we wanted to add a screen system to it. So this, uh, this will allow you to open the outside, but still have a screen. I see. Uh, your, so it's like a traditional your, tent style. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a little different. So you might notice up here on the top, uh, we've added that, you see that section? Underneath that's a zipper. Okay. So what we have is a, a, a large rain fly, not a rain fly, but more of an awning area that, uh, that you zip it in. And with spring bows, it holds out and uh, provides an awning space for, for the entryway. And that's available on both sides uh, going forward. Um, so that's that's new for us. Um, so we are working to some other things in the works as far as an actual rain fly too. Uh, those do have to be somewhat transitional because uh, if you remember, uh, maybe I said it last year, we are out of space to be able to, to, to be able to close it. Any more tent material will make it close hard. Yeah. So uh, that's why the rain fly and the, and the awnings all have to sort of zip off. Uh, because we want to make it easy to use, yeah. right? We don't want people having to sit and, like, crank on it to get it to, to close. Yeah. Your biggest selling point is the fact that it folds up and it's the same height as yeah. the truck, right? Cab high. Yeah. Cab so you can park high. it in your garage. Yeah, yeah. so that's our, uh, yeah, that was the original goal, right? Is yeah. to build a fully self-contained RV, essentially, yeah. that you can put on any, uh, 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 your, uh, your baby, right, your truck bed, and be able to park it in the garage, right? So if you got to go downtown to a restaurant, you need to go into a parking garage. Uh, center of gravity is low for wheeling. Uh, we have some customers uh, out there that one of the things that they say is that whatever their truck would do before without the camper, the truck will do with the camper. And that uh, really extends the range. And uh, yeah, traditional towable products, uh, you know, frankly, can't go the places that a product like this could go. And I, and I think you guys are the only guys that have literally everything in the kitchen yeah. sink yep. and a flushing toilet and black sink yep. Yep. in the size of a topper. Yep, in the size <laughs> of a topper, right? Yeah. So this is our, our biggest model, the six and a half. Uh, it, uh, and like I said, when it's closed, it, it, it sits right right here on this truck. So it's a little bit taller than this uh, this uh, this truck, but maybe by that about that yeah. much. So the, the roof rack is actually here is taller than the camper. Um, That's a big selling point for some yeah, guys. So aerodynamic, yeah. so you don't take that big fuel mileage hit mm -hmm. that uh, that you would as soon as you get up over cab and you uh, with any pop up or uh, a canopy camper or whatever, uh, you lose fuel mileage and it's it's drastic. It's yeah. uh, it's very noticeable. I noticed yeah. what's different too since the last time I saw you. This bed is different. Yeah, so this is actually not us. So this is a traditional truck tray from Bowen Customs. Bowen, and, yeah, I interviewed yeah. those guys. Yeah, yeah. so they're. Uh, uh, this whole build was TAB, Tactical Application Vehicles, mm -hmm. Bowen. They kind of all came together to, mm -hmm. to build a, a setup that would take our camper. Mm -hmm. So what's, uh, they had to make some modifications in order to have like a tailgate area, a swing yeah. gate area. Uh, we can walk around and show them. Yeah, yeah, check I it mean, out. I mean, I think this is a perfect 
mix with you guys because storage is at yeah, a premium storage, yeah, for you guys. Storage, so this gives yeah, you all the storage. Yeah. So this is like want. a pass-through storage that goes all the way through to the front. Um, back here, we uh, instead of a drop gate, there's a swing gate. Um, this oh, is cool. a full-size swing gate. This is all full of molly panels, so you can hang. Let me uh, let me get a shot of it right here. So you have this oh, area yeah. here. You can put anything you want back here. A you know, place for the spare if you don't have like a, you know, a lot of trucks that have 37 inch uh, tires don't have a place for a spare yeah. up underneath. So the spare is uh, here on this one. But it gives you access to your whole utility setup here. This is where yeah. we, we drain out the black tank. This is where we drain the floor drain for the internal shower system drains to this point. Oh, that's um, nice. That we've added. We've added to our current campers as an option a UV sterilization option. If it had it, you would have a valve here. But what that does is allows you to draw water in from any source, sterilize it, and then onboard it onto the tanks. Oh, nice. And it also deals with the water that comes in on the rainwater catch. That's right. I remember you guys saying this catches water here. Yeah, it catches water, and you can onboard it through the through this, this port here. You put a hose on from there, <laughs> and you run it over to your fill. That is so cool. And then what's cool about this system, it's LED, and it's 12 volt, and it's based uh, on the pressure side of the pump. So basically, as soon as you turn on the pump, it starts sterilizing. So everything that goes through the pump gets sterilized. That's awesome. This so, is like a survival vehicle. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Like this is a good a bug out yeah. bug out vehicle yeah, for really those is. guys. Uh, this is a good opportunity to tell the guys about this area here because this is where your storage yeah, so is, this right? Is, uh, so this is all water. Water, yeah. So yeah. there's uh, 36 gallons of fresh water wow. on this guy. And then there's a 20-gallon black tank. So our black tank, um, it's, so the toilet that sits in here, uh, basically directly, it sits over it. So it's a gravity flush RV toilet. So, it, but it is a flushing toilet with a 20-gallon storage tank. And what that means is uh, the whole family can hit it for multiple days. Yeah. Versus a porta potty, which is what the is the standard. So this is the toilet system is optional because we do understand that some people don't want that. Uh, some people don't even want the porta potty in there, right? So that's uh, <laughs> they want to put it outside. Yeah, yeah. they just want to. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's yeah. kind of you choose how you how you want to configure it. This so, those numbers compete with small travel trailers. Travel trailers, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that it so fits we, in here. we wanted to, yeah. to maximize uh, all of those capacities because yeah, we knew we'd cool. be going on full size trucks, uh, half ton trucks, some of them. So we're a thousand pounds, uh, maybe about a thousand twenty mm -hmm. dry. Oh, okay. As soon as you add water, we're about 1,300 pounds. Uh, most half-ton trucks have uh, plenty of payload for that, but some of them don't, right? There are yeah. some half-ton trucks. I have a new Tundra, and I think it's at 15. Yes, I think the new yeah. Tundra is, uh, we have a, one of these on a new Tundra out in Portland, and um, it, uh, I don't know what he did, if he had to make any mods. I have airbags, so yeah. maybe yeah, that, that helps. Will, <laughs> yeah, that will solve the problem. I saw that it says... Macerator. Yeah, there. macerator. So that's, uh, <laughs> Tell that's about basically that. our way to get the uh, the waste out, right? Yeah. So there was no uh, typical RVs have a gate valve and a and a and a, and a like a three inch, mm -hmm. and it's all gravity, right? But we didn't feel like that that was going to be a possibility back here. So what we did is we put a marine macerator system on there that you can pump the, all the waste out of the tank using a garden hose, and it'll yeah. pump it up to 40, 50 feet. So it's basically that tiny. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in layman's term, it's chopping it up. Yeah, right? it just basically makes it into a slurry yeah. and then pumps it. So That's cool. Uh, it, what's cool about it is that you can put it into like a pit toilet, um, outhouse, your own toilet at home. You can run the hose up into, into yeah. the house. You can deal with your waste in multiple different ways versus a typical RV where you have to sort of uh, go to the dump station. Yeah. Right? So yeah. You, it's, uh, you can't pump it up and out of the way. So if you're on a forest service road and you want to, uh, you can get near a, like a pit toilet or an outhouse, mm -hmm. you just pump it right into the Yeah, into right the into hole. a regular yeah. toilet. Yeah. yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's very, it's actually quite clean. It's quite fast. <laughs> uh, we're really proud of it, but it is. Uh, I'm impressed. Know, That's, I've never seen a, a camper this small with a, a marine grade yeah, macerator. With the toilet, That's cool. Yeah. yeah, so we have a five gallon LP. For the onboard furnace, we mm -hmm. use the Truma Combi, which uh, uh, in this version, it's the Eco, makes 14,300 BTU, which is really massive for this space. I was going to say, yeah. for a small space like this, yeah. you probably stay nice and warm. Yeah, right? so I've uh, during testing, we've been to 9 Below, uh, 
on two different occasions. Nine below. Yeah, all the water wow. flowed. We maintained 68 degrees inside um, in the cabin. Mm -hmm. Of course, obviously it was colder at this end of the bed. Yeah. It in the main area uh, because we're a single layer tent at this point. How many, how many days can you go with that? Well, thing? Roughly, so I know it depends. So, right? so the LP consumption test that we did uh, on, the, on the second 12 hour hit at nine below, we used a, like a gallon a gallon point seven, so 1.7 gallons. Uh, my buddy uh, was with me, had a four-wheel camper. He, he experienced the exact same thing. He used a little bit less, but not a lot less. He used a gallon and a half. But that's due to the furnace being, that German-made furnace being so efficient. It's, uh, it's not a traditional RV furnace where it's on, off, on, off. It basically modulates, comes up, and comes down. It's, uh, Trumas are, uh, are known to be uh, world They got a good reputation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're... Uh, and I see them in a lot of vans. Right, yeah. right. And that's, uh, it's a European company that's come to America within the last uh, uh, five, six years. Mm -hmm. And the combi is really correct because it's our, our hot water heater, too. So it provides the hot and cold water at the shower point and at the sink. Uh, that's cool. Inside. So, um, this is just, this is, this is an amazing truck. Man, this yeah, is this so truck, cool. this build is, is really something. It so, just looks yeah, good too with yeah. this tr this Boeing yeah, tray. Yeah, really. This okay. actually um, <laughs> you know, provides a ton of a ton of extra uh, storage. Uh, that's one of the one of the challenges we have is trying to put everything into a topper and then retain uh, something I didn't talk about. But um, one of the big big selling features of our product is even in a traditional truck bed, you have all the space down below here is, is user defined. Yeah. So we designed it to go over decked. Mm -hmm. So if you ha currently have decked in your truck, this camper will fit over the top. It will hover oh, over the top. Oh, nice. So the yeah. idea was to, if somebody has a, a drawer system <laughs> that they wanted to keep, yeah. our camper simply goes over the top of that. And our bracket yeah. system and our tie down system is so easy that this camper doesn't have to be a permanent fixture of the truck. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, the camper comes with a jack system that, that, that um, if you notice these receiver tubes. Right here. Those, those are the tubes where our jack system simply slides in mm -hmm. and you release a winch up front and a couple of boat buckles in the back here. This, this camper can be off in six, seven minutes. Oh, wow. And a lot of systems you sort of have to dedicate. Mm -hmm. You lose your tailgate, yeah. uh, you have to bolt them on. Um, there's, uh, I wanted, what we wanted to try to do is make sure that folks could get it off and put it in the corner of the garage, get their truck back to do truck things. Nice. Is, is that designed to just get it off the truck or could you go in it? You, uh, could so you, you go can inside? go in it, but here's the thing is if you want to, if you want to base camp on the jacks, so it's, it, it, it's fine to be in there on the jacks, mm -hmm. but the problem is it's a three point system. Oh. If you get all the way to this corner over here, you oh, get over center of gravity. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the company so it's that not builds, really. Yeah, the company that builds our jack system builds what they call stable sticks. Mm -hmm. um, they're basically a stick that goes here, goes there, goes to the ground with a strap in between. Super simple. Yeah. That's what you would have to do okay. to base camp it. So if you wanted to drop it, take the truck further. It's 10 minutes of work, but you got to carry the stable sticks. So it is yeah. possible. It is if very you possible. To. Yeah. You yeah. just have to be that niche customer. Yeah, you got to. If you're going to base camp it, that's um, <laughs> yeah. like we know that the people will do that. Yeah. It, it is quite a bit easier than even uh, taking on and off a, a regular truck bed. Mm -hmm. But that is one of our concerns. Is obviously the beds, you know, the beds all the way out here. We yeah, rated, yeah, yeah. We rated this bed system for 600 pounds. If you put if you put 200 pounds in this corner, it will get over center of gravity. So we nice. wanted to try to keep the center of gravity as far forward as possible, but because we use just the like three point jacks, I think if we yeah. use four points, it might be better. But, Probably. But, you know, while we're back here, this is a good time to tell them about this because yeah. some some people probably missed this. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's actually solar, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is a 190 watt uh, solar. Um, it's integrated into the design, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always here, but we had to make it in a way that when the camper's closed. You're still the using solar, it. The solar panels. It's catching. very smart, yeah, actually. Catching. Yeah, that's but, a smart design. But when you get to a camp, you got to be able to deploy it. So mm -hmm. it basically hinges out, pivots open, and then from inside, these extrusions 
you have a support bracket that slides out mm -hmm. and pins back into place. Oh, nice. This is a, a six, six and a half amps in full sun, and we mm -hmm. use a Red Arc Battery Manager 30 at mm -hmm. this level, and that basically manages the, the power coming in from That's the, so the cool. solar panel. And uh, with a uh, with like an Omu 156 amp hour battery and just any amount of sun during the day, you're, uh, you pretty much have all the power you need. I, yeah. I generally never uh, push it. Because mm -hmm. the fridges are, uh, we use a Dometic CFF series. Mm -hmm. And it's nominally three, three and a half amps. They're super yeah. efficient. Yeah, they're right. just efficient, right. Yeah. When you consider yeah. driving and then camping and it's just constantly yeah. getting trickle charged. It does, yeah. So you never have yeah. to turn that thing off, ever. Yeah, so when you drive, the truck does uh, come oh, into the Red yeah. Arc as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really when, it's, uh, it's like if you're parked out, just out and the truck's not running, uh, and it's closed you'll always be catching solar and then when you're camping you'll always be catching solar but one thing if you're a transitional overlander where you're only spending like one night maybe two per spot mm -hmm. the, the truck being on in the, in the middle basically brings your battery back to that's awesome to full. i love it that is awesome and there's really like uh, not a lot of power powerful appliances inside that draw a lot. There is a 1,000 yeah. watt inverter that you can, like if you plug in a zero breeze to it or um, something like a coffee pot, it'll draw quite a bit while it's on. Uh, we did provide the 1,000 watt inverter at that, <laughs> at that level. That's gonna be your largest power draw in the system yeah. because the furnace, even at like full tilt, is four and a half amps. Mm -hmm. um, and all in the wall, and the tank heaters. So the, this does have electric tank heaters. Wow. Um, but that's only intended to be used while you're driving. Uh, okay. Because the furnace, the furnace heats the holding tank area while it's open and being used. But when you're driving, you can't have the furnace running. So we had to come up with a way to protect your water tanks in between camp spots, right? So if you're uh, traveling in below, below zero conditions, you can flip on the, the two tank heaters at the back here. And that basically heats all three tanks. That's cool. So it's, uh, but you gotta remember to turn it off. That's 15 amps a draw. So on a 156 amp hour battery, that's uh, nine, you know, eight hours uh, before the, the low voltage shut off will uh, yes. shut it off. So if you want to head up inside, yeah. I'll show you a couple. This is where this is where the magic is right here. Going inside. Well, I guess I can go in first, yeah. right? Yeah, All right. Free. So go up, and as you can see, this thing is so shockingly big in here. We're yeah. in the back. We're in the back of this truck, but it feels ginormous back here. Look at the headroom. Yes, yeah, so we're uh, just under seven feet at the middle on on all three of our models. We tried to achieve uh, some really cavernous headroom, mm -hmm. and then we chose a material that uh, that has some translucent, uh, so light can come through, and it's white. Uh, that was kind of intentional because what I wanted, what we wanted to try to accomplish is, is have have it feel bigger than it is. Yeah. And uh, I think we achieved that. It's it's hard to believe that there's a camper with almost as much floor space as a, a four wheel hawk. Like physically standing space is very similar to a, a traditional truck bed. Yeah. Camper. The seating area is uh, a little bit less, but three people that uh, four with kids can easily sit here. Yeah. Um, and then this dinette is, is just sort of transitional. It's a right? lagoon table, right? Yes. It's a, yeah, it's a, lag, a, a lagoon table. Uh, we have this table top made. This is designed for like Yeti cups, like these. Oh, yeah. So you can. That's actually the yeah. first time I've seen somebody do that. Man. Yeah, so it's kind of yeah. uh, helps uh, keep things stable if, yeah. uh, if you're moving around in here. This is fully adjustable. Uh, up, down, and everywhere else, and then we also set this so it's an extension of your your workspace at the kitchen, right? So um, if you want to prep, yeah, yeah, you can nice. kind of use this whole this whole uh, this whole area, right? Mm -hmm. um, so some of the changes from the last time is we added Molly to a lot of surfaces. I noticed that, yeah, yeah. So along the sides, through here, through here, we redesigned this whole area to be more efficient. Uh, a lot of this was to do with taking some of the weight out of this uh, kitchen unit because we felt that it was a little bit heavy to uh, especially if you filled this area full of oh that's wear. right you have to pick that up yeah right? you have to take this off and set it on set the on the right floor here. okay uh, but that's yeah. easily done with just quick release push button valve connectors mm -hmm. uh, that's your hot and cold your gas the room tap sensor for the tr uh, truma 
and then there's a drain out for the sink that goes to a port on the side. So we don't capture gray water. It just goes to the ground? Yeah, it goes okay. to a side port. So mm -hmm. uh, we added a, 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 an extra long hose to the hot and cold shower point. Uh, now this is capable of reaching all the way out to the underside of the, of the uh, underneath the bed. And then we're working on a shower enclosure that works both inside oh, and outside. Nice. If you notice here, there's a floor drain that with the new with the new shower enclosure you'll be able to theoretically set up in here and shower yeah and you know my wife would appreciate that because sometimes you don't want to go outside yeah. you want to just stay yeah. in here right and have basically this whole area as your yep. private bathroom yep. yeah. private bathroom yep That's and cool. uh marine mat flooring so this is uh this is getting dialed in for us we are experimenting with the weave from this same company but this is the same stuff you find on higher end boats you know the, yeah. the marine mat flooring so it's uh, nice and cushy on your on your feet and um, yeah here's the toilet in here which i think you've seen this, yeah. this this really hasn't changed from last year but this is kind of our crowning achievement as far as um, this is what blew me away when I first saw it. I'm like, yeah. that, that's not a porta potty. It's a full yeah, black a tank regular toilet. Flushing yeah, toilet. Flushing yeah. toilet. You no, know, it's out of sight, yeah. out of mind. Um, you wouldn't know it's there unless you, you know, yeah, you opened it up. Well, and then this sits, you know, this that, that just sort of uh, mm -hmm. you know completes the bench area. Um, what would you say that bed size of the bed? So Can you crawl over there and demo yeah, for yeah. the guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, How tall uh, are you? Well, I'm uh, six foot. Okay, perfect. And, uh, so. It's 76 inches long, mm -hmm. is the, is from here down to, to the bottom, and it's 51 inches wide. So it's more like a double, yeah. you know, like an RV double. Um, mm -hmm. That's dictated by the width of the top of the truck, right? You know, yeah. Because we tried to make our campers profile with the truck, not just be cab tall, mm -hmm. but cab profile. Mm -hmm. So when you're going down tight tree trails, even if you look in your rear view mirror, you don't see a, a camper. Right? Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, but yeah, the bed area is is, is uh, you know, is quite nice. Yeah. You know, what uh, what thickness is this? Flap? Well, th so that transition flap is is the thin part oh. that covers our hinge. Oh, I see. So that's yeah. just an extension, but this is three three point two. Oh, it's nice and thick yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So we've got it. Uh, that's a nice touch. Well, we. Yeah. This, so this has to flip over to cover the hinge. We have yeah. a like a, a solid like a solid rubber piece in here. Mm -hmm. That way, it doesn't hurt your knees. Yeah. Uh, typically, with your pillow here, there's no there's no pressure points up here. Yeah. So this doesn't need to be as thick as these pressure point areas, like where your like your hip, your shoulder, and yeah. your knees. So, uh, you know, it's pretty comfortable. Um, we are experimenting with air up here, like an air system up here yeah. that's adjustable. So Some people like yeah. it, some people don't, right? Yeah, so one, one of the things that we found is it's hard to pick a foam that everybody likes. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, uh, you know, some people find it too hard, some people find it too soft. And uh, that's what's been, the capacity over here? 600. Six, yeah. Oh, okay. So you got yeah. plenty of capacity. Yeah. So we so we tested the 1,000 pounds, and then we're gonna just go ahead and rate it at 600. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a, a static 1,000 pound test, so dynamically we think it's 600. Pounds. Yeah. More than enough. Yeah. You know, we use stainless steel. Um, one of the one of the things that make us, I guess, what. what well, we're considered expensive, but every 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 piece of hardware in here is either stainless or aluminum. There's, it's a wood-free build in its entirety. So you don't have to worry different. about wood rotting. Yeah, yeah there's nice. uh, it, it's it's basically like a built like an aluminum boat, so you can get it wet. Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. Dry it out. It's, uh, I like it's, that. Uh, Really are, marine grade. What are what am I looking at here? What is that? Well, so that's part of the so that's part of the system that when you open our camper. It, de it deploys the tent by itself for the most part. So all of this, all of this happens. Ninety percent of the, the deploy action of the whole tent happens simply by opening the lid. Okay. That's what makes it so easy to set up. We're only uh, I can get up and down in eight minutes. Like from, uh, I remember the yeah, demo yeah, in Denver. Yeah. yeah, it's really quite quite quick. It's fast. But part of that is and pol uh, this pulley system raises this center this center oh, bow system. Oh, this up. slides up and down. Yeah, so that's how oh, that's I how we that's how we achieve the adjustability of the, of the tent. Yeah. To get more more tension. And then it locks. And then you use these uh, bar clamps. 
and that that's uh, what that does is tightens the tent in different conditions because the tent material itself is not unlike any other material. When it's cold, it's smaller. When it's warm, it's bigger. Right? It expands. This allows us to uh, sort of uh, you know adjust the tension of the tent. Um, but that, that was also the only way we could get everything to collapse in on itself yeah. and still have the headroom all the way up there. Yeah, I mean, there's, up by there's, the a little, there's a little example of the headroom in here. I'm by the kitchen, which is probably one of the lower areas. That's one of the lowest. Yeah. And I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, with shoes on. I still got a lot of room here. It's comfortable. And then That's back nice. here, which is unique, is how much headroom is at the, at the better. Yeah. So this is actually a great hangout area for if you have a bad weather event, you got to get five, six people in here, a couple people you can up just kind of lounge around. Yeah, yeah. you can kind of uh, use this area because it's so tall. Traditional truck bed campers uh, that pop straight up only have about There's that. not one. much. That, yeah. yeah, it's really mm -hmm. quite limited, so you can uh, hardly even set up. That's and, the big yeah. selling point, I think, to this, yeah. really. So it's, it's really nice and cavernous, even all the way back to yeah. this point. Here. It makes it feel yeah. bigger than it is. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the floor plan is a little smaller, it right. feels right. bigger. Well, like I said, the uh, one of the one of the things is is by going up to the floor height, being at the top of your box, mm -hmm. we got to think outside of the box where everything could go mm -hmm. as far as utilities. Most truck bed campers start at the floor of the box, mm -hmm. and that's uh, they're limited by the width of the wheel wells, and then everything comes up from there. By going out. And up, we were able to uh, basically put stuff wherever we want, engineering wise. <laughs> and that's yeah. how we got the Truma Combi to fit underneath the fridge. Yeah. Uh, the Red Arc, the inverter, and the battery all fit in one compartment, which is kind of a cool achievement because we yeah, have uh, I like it. We have our, our inverter where you plug directly right into the to the inverter. Mm -hmm. But everything, all the electrical sits in this bay, so it's all con consolidated. So that's just pure storage. Wow, this is just pure storage. Nice. And then that's pure storage, and then that's mostly storage. There's there is some water components in there, but uh, the idea there was to try to uh, just tighten up and just get better each time, and that's one of the changes that we've made. We went with automotive style wiring harnesses that use uh, Deutsch connectors, right? So we have our harness made out of body by a company. That's what they do. So it's all plug and play for our team. They just get it, they plug it in. That really uh, enhances the consistency. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. It's like a work of art to me. Like, just when you look closely at everything that you guys did, it really does. It's just cool. It's, it's cool to yeah, look thank at. You. It's yeah. artistic. Really. Yeah, we're, we're real proud of it, where it's yeah. going. It's, uh, you know, we had a, a pretty hard hit with commodity prices on the I can imagine, yeah. And it's really, uh, we've struggled um, because there's about as much aluminum here as a typical 16-foot aluminum boat. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, because we stayed, if you look here, we stayed an eighth inch through the entire build. Yeah. And that makes it almost military uh, grade as far as, as, far as the, the impact yeah. resistance. And the like the overall durability of this this box will outlast uh, multiple tents and it'll outlast multiple trucks probably. That's nice. That's for, um, uh, I know guys are going to ask me: um, Is it just one size for like full size trucks? Yeah. So uh, sizing. So we, we plan to be, be able to fit all North American trucks, including the Rivian R1T, which is going to be its own product, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so we have a Gladiator-specific product. Oh, okay. We have a, a 5.0, which is for the mid-size American trucks, the Frontier, uh, the Colorado, the Canyon, right? Uh, that's its own camper. That's a different camper. We have a 5.5. This is our 6.5. So the 5.5 is for the F-150 with the short box. The, 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 the I got a Tundra with a 5.5. Yeah, uh, that one's through development. That one's uh, going to be available early next next year. Uh, it works a little bit different than this. Uh, it does have a, a one extra step. Oh wait, yeah, it goes uh, that, that way. Over, Did you guys over have a over. demo one? Well, we have the, our 5.0. It oh, okay. works that on that principle. Yeah. So where it tips out over the front. But mm -hmm. what that does is creates all this floor space, even though we shortened it up by you know, that one foot, right? Um, cool. Eight foot boxes is this camper with a storage system on the front oh, okay. that fills that eight, that uh, 18 inches. And then the six foot midsize is the same concept. It takes our five foot camper with a one foot 
storage system on the front. So uh, we plan on hitting all North American uh, vehicles, and uh, uh, right now this is the only one that's up in like, full production and available. Like you can uh, find a dealer and buy one of these today. Uh, the rest of the models are trickling now. Uh, uh, our 5.0 is uh, is the next up to be available at the dealers, and that's going to be the Tacoma. More or less, we kind of we, we have our own Tacoma that we we sort of engineered it around. So, yeah. Uh, we know that that's a very uh, popular platform, so uh, we started there, and uh, we tried to size it in a way that uh, you know it's like so on an F250. Our camper sits sits a little short on an F-250 because it's got a long b box. On a Ram, it sits you know it sits a little long. Yeah. But we're able to go on all North American full size trucks that are, have the normal six and a half foot truck. So that's how we name our models. Is just basically if you got a six and a half foot truck, that's the camper for it, and it should fit. Uh, and it should fit three generations back too. We did a lot of sizing uh, data gathering to make sure that if you have an older Tacoma or a Tundra that you're not left out and the camper will fit on on it. Probably a truck from the 70s, a square body, you know, a square body yeah. short box. You yeah, know? that's the that's the other big selling point yeah. too is you can go old or new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I cool. think it would be fun to do an old an old build. Yeah, that know, would be like, cool. Uh, kind of take an old square body or an old uh, <laughs> high like a high boy F two fifty or something like that. Yeah, be kind of fun. So. At Overland Expo, you can do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We have several dealers around. Uh, so we have New Mexico, uh, we have Northern California, we have uh, Bend and Portland. Oh, wow. Uh, so we have one in South Dakota, one in uh, Wisconsin, uh, New Hampshire, Florida. Nice. We have several dealers. Uh, uh, Pennsylvania, we, so we have some, this, they're available in and around. And, uh, you know, they, they do take a little bit of. The brackets are a little bit labor intensive, but they tuck in out of the way. So when, in the absence of the camper, uh, you have really nice, clean brackets that, that the, the camper docks do. Nice. So the camper goes back into the same position every time using our bracket system and pins. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's very versatile for that because a guy can get it off. And then when you go to put it back on, you don't have to realign it or do any of that. It just falls back into its original position. That's uh, awesome. So dealers, you know, we needed to get dealers involved in that process because that, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of a specific process. But, sure. sure. Yeah, it's, uh, right check us out on the, online. And I, right on. Yeah. And um, I'm purposely not asking him prices because they fluctuate. Yeah. So when I post this video, it may not be the same price yeah. when well, someone watches it a year from now or whatever. Well, I mean, so they can go to the website yeah, and check it out. Yeah, I will tell you that we are, have seen uh, commodity costs come down. Mm -hmm. So that's going to reflect in our pricing. So our, our current pricing is lower than it was. Yeah. But I will say this, it's probably competing with a high quality um, uh, teardrop trailer. Yeah. And those are like 20,000 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah so I mean, this is in that same realm. Well, and I, yeah, you know, if you want to walk around, you can kind of see what we're up to. Oh, you, know, you got more. As, 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 you know, all along, we wanted to be able to dock it into a, a, our own trailer system. Yeah. So this is the very first. This is our this is our whiteboard, right? This is our foundation <laughs> to start our trailer system. So this uh -oh. allows a customer to uh, have something that's under two thousand pounds, mm -hmm. that's basically under uh, twelve feet long, self-contained RV. Wow! So you know, I'm going to go on the other side yep. and get a wider shot. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's so stand over is, uh, here and I'll let you explain from a wider shot. Yeah. So it's basically like a teardrop trailer. Yeah. But you can carry a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Huh? So it's a, what we wanted it be able to do is dual as a utility uh, motorsports trailer. I like uh, it. We're going to have several different uh, ways to box it in. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to have uh, different uh, storage systems for the sides. Uh, so right now this is our whiteboard, right? This is uh, this nice. just got done. Is this the first time you guys showed it off? This is the, the oh, first time. Yep. There yep. you go, guys. Yep. See, I got yep. one of the first shots yep. right here. Yep. Well, that's. Uh, <laughs> So we have a, a go for it. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, we have a colleague in the business uh, over at uh, uh, Norco Industries BAL mm -hmm. that uh, they have some uh, incredible abilities to, to make this for us at a, at a really reasonable cost. So this is not a pre-existing trailer nope. that you're putting this on. It's nope, made this is for our this. trailer. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. going to continue. It's going to continue to evolve mm -hmm. to be uh, very specific to our docking needs, mm -hmm. right? 
but be expandable to be able to put a kitchen unit on the front. Mm -hmm. Be expandable to be able to put saddlebag, uh, mm -hmm. uh, handyard style uh, uh, storage, nice. back tracks, uh, roto packs. <laughs> have a, a, a ramp system to be able to put a trail side by side up in it or a four wheeler. Mm -hmm. um, it's got 3,500 pound axles on it. So Let's take a look at those axles. Yeah, so we we use the Timberin, we use the Timberin 3,500 HDs. Uh, there we go. And uh, lots of ground clearance here in the middle. That's, that's one of the best things about Timberin is they're easy to engineer with. They ride actually pretty good. They're, uh, they don't bounce, they don't have as much travel as a, a trailing arm system, but Look at the ground clearance. Yeah, on you got these a lot of ground of clearance. That big drop spindle, right? Uh, where most trailing arm systems, uh, they have the you know their uh, the bottom of their their trailing arm is right at the center point of the axle. Yeah. And uh, so the and, like the minimum ground clearance, even with this, uh, like I think this is a 31 inch tire, mm -hmm. is really really quite good. Uh, so we're excited to to kind of just start getting feedback from customers of, of ideas of where to go from here. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, going to be a really reasonably priced product. We're really shooting for like retail uh, under six thousand. Nice. You know, uh, and uh, so we think that that there's not a lot out there that has the off-road suspension, the off-road mm -hmm. tire, aluminum wheels, a lock and roll hitch. Uh, this will have a swing a swing away tongue jack. We just have the center one on here for the show. But uh, yeah, we're excited about that because that's going to allow somebody. To, that has a family that has a JKU. Mm -hmm. You got a truck. The wife has a Jeep. It's very versatile. You want to take yeah. the family one trip, uh, and uh, maybe do a rooftop tent on this, and have the skinny guy up in the mm -hmm. in the back there. There's uh, boy, the the options start to kind of stack up, right? So that's uh, I, that's that's exciting because literally you have all the capabilities again that that has. Right. Now it's in a trailer. Right. Now it's a total. That is, yeah. with car more cargo capacity. That is Tons so awesome. Tons of cargo. Uh, mm -hmm. So th this one, this one does not have the underbelly unit. This is a, what we call our bare bones, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or uh, skin and bones model. At this point, this is just a, a, a our our shell, but a very elaborate. It's basically that, just without systems. Gotcha. Still got the cushions. Still got the bed. Still got a, a dinette table mm -hmm. and a and a floor mat. Right. Speaking of that, yep. if it, you just get the bare bones one, how much is the bare bones? One? So right now we're uh, fifteen five okay. for the, our 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 base bases mm -hmm. of the base model. Gotcha. Right? Uh, that's uh, that's dealer retail. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, we do. Uh, this is all something I haven't talked about. We have a, an even baser model mm -hmm. in development. So you uh, know that the canopy camper business, right? Mm -hmm. The go fast. Yeah. The, uh, the Harker. The uh, AT, uh, they're rooftop all over tent kind of yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. they're uh, you know basically an integrated rooftop tent into a topper, right? Yeah, that's that's a that's a big business. There's a lot of, a lot of those out there, but they're all over cap. There's mm -hmm. no system out there that's a full canopy like with the rear hatch like a topper. Yeah, that that doesn't go over cap. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna we're gonna be the first. You'll be the first. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna have a side entry. Yeah. Uh, it's basically this side yeah. entry yeah. cab high canopy camper mm -hmm. with a rear hatch. That's cool. Uh, so that's uh, that's. Can't wait be, to see that. Yeah. One. So that one's gonna be. Uh, we're really shooting for like that ten five to eleven thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollar retail mm -hmm. price point on that one. Yeah. To get our prices down uh, closer to the canopy camper. Uh, you know, uh, Very. Where cool. they normally are. That's awesome, man! I can't, I can't wait for Overland Expo when I start yeah, seeing those. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have uh, by <laughs> May of next year. We should have our, yeah. what we're going to be calling the base cap. So nice. We call it base cap. So base so, cap, right so on. That's, there you uh, go. Kind of. All right. Is that's pretty much everything then, huh? I think so. All yeah. right. Well, thanks again, yeah. Donovan, for the awesome tour at SEMA. All right, there you go, guys. Check them out. Skinny guy campers, doing some big things. I think. Uh, the teardrop world's got to, they got to uh, watch out because you guys are coming. Right. <laughs>